Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me today. With the release of version 4.5 of Presaurus's Studio 1 DAW, there has been up to 70 new features added into it and this was a free upgrade and there's lots of videos around on YouTube you can search and watch all of those features. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on one of the features that has been added and the misconceptions surrounding its features. And I'm going to show you how you can use that for your advantage and what it can do and what it can't really do. Well, I hope you stick around and learn more about how to record great sounding audio. The new feature and the topic of this video we are talking about are the input gain knobs. This allows you to adjust the gain up so you can increase the input signal, as you can see it's happening right there, or you can turn it down so you have less signal coming in. And the level that you get selected here, that's coming in, is what's recorded or printed on your track. We also get the phase option. This allows us to actually change the phase of the incoming signal, so that if you have two microphones set up, a good example would be a snare top and bottom, and if there are any uh, phase issues, phase cancellations, you can click and this will automatically invert the phase and then this might solve the phase issues and you don't have to worry about it in the mix. I'm going to use my Yamaha AG03 audio interface to demonstrate this and I've got my normal level for the, my microphone input and my input gain set correctly so we've got nice good signal coming in. The advantage of this audio interface, and usually most audio interfaces do come with this option as well, is an LED that indicates peak or clipping. And that's what we want to test later on. The input gain is really great because if you have a, a low signal coming in, either through the audio interface or the input uh, audio signal source is quite low, let's simulate that by turning my gain down. Uh, my voice might get low. Now we can actually increase that. So now we are getting again a nice good signal when we are recording. So let's set for recording. Let's turn it back down to what it was and start recording. We can see that the signal coming in is quite low. So if you want a little bit more than minus 20 dB signal, we can use the input gain to increase that level so that we've got nice signal to work with. Make sure it's not too loud, you know, minus 10 dB, minus 9 dB is really great area for speech re recording. Of course, this works out the other way as well. If the singer or the vocalist or the drums gets too loud every now and then, we can certainly bring the gain down so we're not getting too hot and we're leaving some headroom in our recording. But here's the misconception. If the signal gets too loud, that it's actually clipping on your audio interface, reducing this input gain will not help you because it's already distorted on the way in before being converted to analog to digital or it gets clipped during the conversion from analog to digital. Let me demonstrate. So I'm going to start recording and I'm going to start turning my input gain up so that when I'm uh, talking, it's getting really loud and now I've got the red peak LED um, on my microphone level uh, already uh, coming up uh, all the time as well as on my main bus. So as I turn it up, it gets really, really distorted. Now, even though it's showing minus um, 0.8 dB, oh, it's, it's going to get loud as soon as I start speaking a little bit louder. Now, let's say, oh, that's too loud, it's clipping, so let's bring the gain down so that it's not uh, clipping but back down to minus 11 minus 12 db but later on when we zoom in into the signal we're going to find out that even though it recorded at low volume as we see right here the difference from there to there uh, let's zoom in and find out how distorted it is my apologies about the distorted audio hope you understood what i was talking about so let's have a look what a clean signal looks like at their peak. If we zoom in all the way, we can see it's nice rounded and good shapes of audio. And now let's have a look 
a signal that has been clipped on the way in and it's too loud, like uh, over here. We might find that they pretty much squared out. That's how distorted the signal was. On the way in. And there is no way we can actually solve this squaring because of the distortion on the way inside. Now, even though after a while we did turn the input gain down, let's um, have a look here, and it's still squared out and it will sound horrible and there is no solution to this. So what you need to do is you have to make sure that even at 0 dB you are getting good signal and the audio interface is not actually clipping when you are recording. So you do get nice clean audio. As you can see the input gain control is a really fantastic tool you can use for your advantage. So if low signals you can boost it but high signals, you can bring it down, but if it's already clipping, not much you can do. So that's the misconception. I hope people understand that you cannot uh, reduce distortion and clipping on the way in by turning that gain knob down at the input. If this was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up and subscribe and all of that. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Till next time. Cheerio, guys.